Hello and welcome back to my channel once again. Today I, well, I started this video talking and then realized that my neighbors were mowing the lawn and that wasn't gonna work. So we're opting for a voiceover. Today I am turning myself into one of the ultimate queens of darkness, Morticia Adams. I started my makeup by picking a very light colored foundation with a cool undertone, which kind of contrasts some of the pink and the other tones in my skin. I wanted to make sure to get it all flat and matte and very, very flawless so that it would match Morticia. I am pretty pale myself, but I did want to go paler. To make sure that everything is blended out perfectly, I'm using this BH Cosmetics brush and blending everything out, smoothing everything out. Again, I want that super perfect porcelain finish. I'm now going in with a brown tone from the Graftobian concealer palette. I did pick one again that has cool undertones and I'm going in and outlining my jawline and my cheekbone area. Morticia has super, super defined cheekbones and a nice sharp jawline, so I'm trying to bring those out. Also on my face personally, I feel the need to sharpen my chin and take in the sides of my nose a little bit just to look more like her. Once these are placed, I'm blending them out as well. I think sharp cheekbones and a sharp jawline are one of my favorite things to put on myself. I really like the way they work and look, even when they're super, super dramatic like this. Next, I'm going in with the Butt Naked palette from NYX and I'm using some of their cream colored shadows and using that as my highlighter and to just kind of seal in some of my foundation. And then going in with some grayer brown toned shadows and touching up anything that I want in the cheekbones because again, I want them to be Super, super dramatic. All of the drama. All of the drama everywhere. To seal this all off, I'm using Graftobian's translucent powder and just sealing everything in. I did use cream base for a lot of this, so I'm making sure to put extra layers on to really seal in all of that cream and make sure it ain't going nowhere. Now I'm dipping into my Pro Fusion Sultry palette. It has one of the best matte black shadows I have ever encountered in my life. And I'm gonna go straight for those super dramatic brows. Morticia's brows are really arched and gorgeous. Mine are a little bit too big to match hers, but I absolutely despise gluing my eyebrows down. I don't do it unless I have to have to. So I'm just going to work with what I've got, lining my own brows and trying to make them more arched and a little bit underdrawn compared to where they actually are in order to look like Morticia's. I'm filling in the tail of the brow and then bringing some of the residual powder forward and just kind of fading off in the very front edge of the brow. You will notice that I've also taken the brow down closer to my nose than where my natural brow sits. This will create a more dramatic arch and it's also going to allow me to have my shadow meet my eyebrow like Morticia's does. To get this super crisp, I'm using a concealer along the edges. 
outlining that and then blending it out for the sharpest, most crisp brows that I can possibly have. Moving on to the shadow. Like I said, her shadow does touch the inner corner of her brow. So I am outlining first the area of my eyeshadow that will be all black. And then I'll go back in and shave that out. This is my darkest point in my shadow. I'm making sure to leave space between the arch of my shadow and the arch of my brow while still having the inner corner of my brow and my shadow touch. Now I'm going in with a very dark purple back over the area that I just blended out that's black starting from my outer corner and working my way in. I don't want to bring it all the way to that tip and have that tip get over heavy on that inner corner, but I definitely want to bring a lot of my purple up over my black color and make sure that it's equally blended out. I'm going back in with another shade of purple as I'm watching this, I feel like I look like I'm being extremely violent with this purple shadow. <laughs> but I'm bringing it into my outer corner and blending it up into the arch. I don't want to take this more than a third of the way in because the inner corners of her eyes on the bottom half is nude. Which is where you see me going in with a concealer now and making that defining line of where that nude area is going to start. I'm also going back in and sharpening the arch underneath the brow between the shadow and the brow so that I can make that arch even more dramatic. And then we blend, 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 my pretties. I don't know why anybody watches this channel, honestly, I'm such a dork. One thing to note, make sure that you're blending on the line that you laid down and not blending up and into your shadow and then losing that shadow line because then you're undoing all the work you just did. This is only to clean up and sharpen these areas that you already left nude, not to spread that nude or white color up into the shadow that you laid down. I'm now going to blend my nude color into my purple. So I'm taking the purple from that outer corner and taking it closer to the center of the eye. And then I'm going in with a nude or white colored powder and sealing in those areas that I put the concealer down and blending them with the darker shaded areas of eyeshadow. Once again, make sure that you're not shading too far in and taking away or mucking up the shadow you already laid. A muck, a muck, a muck, a muck. Wrong movie. Mwah. Now we're going in for the wing. So one thing I've noticed with a lot of Morticia interpretations is that the wing gets really large and really dramatic. Morticia's wing in the movies is actually pretty small. You can see I already did wing one side of my eye. I thought it was recording and I wasn't. But we want to keep this small and subtle, just this pretty little cat eye off to the side. I'm going in for the lip. My lips are a little bit more full than hers are, so I've actually underlined my bottom lip 
and I want to keep that shape really nice and flat to match the shape of her lips. When I go into that top lip too, I'm not going to give myself as much of a cupid's bow as I normally have. I'm going to keep that dip very small once again to try and match or emulate her lip shape rather than trace my natural shape. Lastly, I feel like her lips are, I don't know how to say this other than longer than mine. So I'm going into the corners and bringing the edge of my lip out just the tiniest bit. I don't want to overdraw it and look like a clown. The one thing I think I kind of strayed from the original is I put on lashes that I feel like are a bit bigger than hers, but I did notice they were fanned out in PC, so I tried to pick lashes that matched that and then added Lina and mascara. Gotta make the mascara face, or it doesn't count. And then we're going to add hair, because she was not a ginger. Seven days. Wrong movie. Voila. It's not a synthetic wig unless you eat some of the hair. Make sure to center that part. And I'm going to go in with my Graftobian powder again. Now when I did this I went a little heavy on it so I had to go back in and use just a little bit of water to get some of it out. But I'm actually matting out some of the shine by adding that powder into my wig. You can see I dab it on top and then comb it through. And then I actually dip my fingers in the powder and run the powder through the longer parts of the wig. This takes away some of the synthetic look. I want her hair to look healthy shiny, not plastic shiny. And then I vogue away and feel absolutely fabulous because I am a queen of darkness. I got to shoot at this really fantastic location with my friend Erin. She is a photographer in the area and she's absolutely fabulous. She took these wonderful pictures, so make sure to check her out, linked below. Thanks for watching.